Do you want to know how teens go from texting to sexting? It's a real thing. I am Nicolleen Peck and I teach all about parenting, good communication, how to build strong family bonds, child development, all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we are talking about the social phenomenon where children start texting and end up sexting. <laughs> In this video, we're gonna talk about the current situation with texting and sexting and teens, why it's happening, and what we can do to create a culture in our homes and in our communities to help our children transition away from the destructive habit of sexting. So why is sexting so bad? I mean, aside from the fact that it is totally fake interaction with other people that is manipulating them psychologically, sexually, hormonally, all kinds of things. I mean, it's definitely exploiting other people. So aside from that, why is it bad? Well, because it's a habit, because it, the whole focus is the objectification of people. This is damaging for future family relationships and bonds, parent-child bonds. That sexual relationship that occurs between a husband and wife who establish themselves together as a family unit and then create children after that is actually something that holds the whole family fabric together. If that union and that particular act is respected, then everyone within the family benefits from that because the relationships are less selfish and less exploitive. So if our children are learning to exploit each other sexually, psychologically, online, on their phones and devices, what is going to be the situation in their future relationships? How are their children gonna feel about them? if they seem completely selfish in their relationships and they haven't dropped that. Now, hopefully we can help our children pull away from this, but it does start with texting and that's really important to recognize. Texting is a very helpful thing, right? I text every single day. There was a point when I was resistant to texting because I'm like, come on, we can just call, right? The old fashioned thing. Anyway, but once I started texting, I was like, oh, this is so nice. This is so fast. We just cut to the chase on all of these different conversations that I'm in. We don't have to do the, how are you? Da, 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 da. We don't have to, what? Actually use our social skills. I mean, sure, there's a little bit of social skills that can be used on texting, but it actually is a completely selfish mode of communication. Texting is even less connective than email. Because in email, people know, oh, I can write more about my feelings and my thoughts and stuff like that. But texting, you're like, oh, it's gotta only be really, really short. So I'm just gonna cut right down to this. And I don't wanna send too many messages because that would be annoying. Just the other day, I had a friend of mine go, have you noticed from this colleague of ours that she just sends text after text after text? And it's just like one word, one piece of punctuation. One, and she's just blowing up my phone all the time. This is driving me crazy. So people get very emotional about the text etiquette, right? And we know that it can't be too long. So what does that mean? That means that our children get in the habit of communicating shortly and then they start communicating about very private, very personal things in very short, short sentences. In fact, there are entire acronyms that stand for grotesque sexual acts that they're asking each other if they want to do. There's a whole culture for this sexting and it is rampant. In fact, we have been aware as a culture of sexting for a very long time now. I think probably like 12 or 13 years that we've been aware that this has been going on with the young people. So if you are on your phone texting a lot and you're texting a lot of young people, chances are some sort of sext message is going to come to you at one point or another. Now, number one thing, pick the right type of friends that do that. But depending on where you live and you know certain other you know factors possibly, it could be that almost anyone you know is doing this. So how do they transition from this 
texting to sexting because that is definitely a thing that occurs. Um, it's really just the, the dependency on the texting for the social. It's gonna naturally end up leading to it because what is the end of the social? What is the goal of most social interactions? Usually it's to find that partner relationship. I mean, obviously there's friend relationships too, there's colleague relationships, works, all those things are part of our social development. But for many people, especially when we're young, it's a lot of our social development is pointing toward who am I going to be interested in romantically, right? Who am I going to kiss and share my life with or whatever, those types of things. And so when that's part of the social and all the social is happening on text, guess what happens? Especially when children are often engaging in the porn culture as well. So the more that they look at pornography and those types of things, the more that starts coming out in the text messaging and soon we have a rampant sexting culture. Another thing that is occurring is on social media, Snapchat, those types of things. There's a lot of sexting and pornographic things that are happening on there as well. And so I don't know how long you can go and not see at least something. Now, hopefully you're not looking at the wrong types of things and your child's algorithm is, you know, still pretty basic if they're on social media, you know, those types of things. But the more things you let your child on, the more they're experiencing, the more they are going to have a chance of coming face to face with this culture. I had a conversation with a young man. He is, I believe, 20 and his name is Andrew. He's from New York City. And I was talking to him about sexting and texting. And I said, so Andrew, tell me, public school, New York City, what was the sexting culture? And he's like, huge, everyone, pretty much. And I was like, what's the percentage, you know, of the kids that are engaging in the sexting culture, say in the high school? He's like, easy 70, for sure, 70%, maybe more. I said, really? That's so high. He said, well, yeah. And I said to him, I said, Andrew, why do you think that is? I mean, he wasn't one of the kinds that engaged in that, or at least for sure he's not right now. So, um, but I asked him, why do you think that is? And he sat there for a second and he said, well, I mean, it's pretty simple, actually. He said, because nobody dates. And so since there's no dating culture anymore, it's looked at as an old fashioned thing. Now everybody just sends each other texts. And so they're basically kind of dating through text, but really what they want is just to see who they can have sex with. Cause that's what the media, you know, tells you that the relationship is about. In fact, if you go on a date with a person, everyone assumes you are having sex, even if it's your first date. And he's like, so it's all about the sex, all of it, Every, everything's been made about the sex. The, even when they talk about relationships at school, you know, like in sex ed class, it's all just about the sex. It's assumed that everyone's gonna have sex. And so even the parents are assuming that their children will have sex and the school counselors and the teachers, they're just assuming it. And so then when they are only texting, because nobody's brave enough to ask each other out anymore because it's not in the culture and they don't know what to do, how to have a relationship, how to cross over that line because there's no clear path anymore for that. Then they just start cutting to the chase being like, hey, do you want to beep, 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 beep? Do you want to do this? Hey, here's a picture of me. Uh, let me see a picture of you. And like, let's see if we can get aroused just on the text and then maybe we can meet up and just, you know. I was like, Andrew, that is so sad. He's like, yeah, people really need to learn how to date. Like, yeah, that's a big thing. But do you know, the parents need to be teaching the date culture. I think one of the reasons that the dating culture changed so much is because parents were afraid of, you know, date rape, uh, exploitation, trafficking, lots of different things, which you can understand. So they're afraid with the children connecting with the wrong people, but they also didn't want their children attaching and getting, you know, tied down too early, starting families early and like having, um, you know, marriages early. And so they're like, no, 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 don't do that. Go to school first, get your job done first, do all these things first. And so they tell their children this as a way to help their children, hopefully, you know, check off all the boxes and be more successful in life. But in reality, at the time where the child is in this heightened state of hormonal development, they're like, oh, what do I do with this? And I'm so curious and all this kind of stuff. And the parents are saying, yep, nope, nope, nope. Just don't even focus on that. It's just not even a thing. And you know, and so then they're like, well, maybe I just need to have a person to get sex with just to get it over with, but I'm not gonna tie down. Mom and dad, don't worry about that. And some parents are actually okay with that. I, I think that's insane. You want your child to be a sex object? I don't even get that. I don't, I'm, I'm sure I'll get flack in the comments. You know, if you don't agree with me, go ahead and comment, that's fine. But 
I don't see a parent saying, go out and have sex, be a sex object for somebody who you don't even really have a great relationship with, who's not gonna commit to you. Go ahead and be an object. I, I just, I would never do that to my child. I would wanna teach my child how to have a real relationship, how to talk to a person, how to get to know a person, how to share experiences and ideas and thoughts with a person, how to fall in real love with a person before they would ever get to that. And to understand that that particular act and all that sexual stuff is so incredibly private, sacred. In, in my mind, it's sacred. It's so incredibly sacred and private that why would you just give it away to anybody? You know? But that is what's happening in the sexting culture. And I do think we need to help our, our teens develop a new culture. I would love to see Hollywood. I would love to see pop culture, social media, promoting the idea of real dates again. The old-fashioned dates. Listen, we're going retro already, okay? Like all the retro clothes and everything else, okay? So everybody's starting to like wear the old graphic tees, things that, you know, I wore when I was in middle school maybe or something, right? It's so cool to find those things and to wear them and the old makeup and the old hairdos and all that kind of stuff, you know? We're back to all those, the same old things. Let's go back to dating and let's teach our children how to do it. So in the Teaching Self-Government program, there are meetings that I teach parents to have with their children and they're called mentor meetings. Those mentor meetings happen once a week and with my children I talked about dates and, and helping them plan for dates and helping them invite people over to the house so that we could teach them how to date and how to get along with each other because a lot of their friends weren't doing that. We had to institute it in our family and get together with other parents and be like, hey, are you guys good with the, like a real old-fashioned date culture? Let's, let's do that together. And so our children would do things together in that old-fashioned way instead of just be on phones texting each other all the time. So we can do something about it. We can introduce it. But I would love to see it ripple through culture to actually date again. Not date to have sex, just, just date to get to know the type of person that you may want to end up with one day. That's the purpose of dating. There's a lot more information about self-government and about the mentor sessions that you could have with your children. The mentor books are at teachingselfgovernment.com and you can get those mentor journals and you can start having mentor meetings with your children about key things. But I highly recommend also developing a family standard which involves sexual activity, texting activity, digital device activity, phone activity. All that stuff is also covered in my book, Parenting a House United, which you can find at teachingselfgovernment.com.